So now we're looking at musculoskeletal tests, which are actually a battery of tests that, which test different components of musculoskeletal fitness, uh, from flexibility to muscle endurance, muscular strength, power, uh, and balance as well. And so this test here is specifically designed to measure lower back endurance using what we call a flexometer. And so before we do this test, I typically like to do this test right after the aerobic fitness test because the body's already warmed up from the cardiovascular exercise. But even though she's warmed up, we're still going to have Clara go through a warm-up stretch. You'll notice she's already removed her shoes, which is a component of this, of this test. And so what we're going to do is a modified hurdler stretch, which essentially is tucking in one foot here, and you're going to reach out and hold your toe. Once again, you don't want to feel pain. You should just feel a comfortable stretch here um, for the hamstrings because those will be uh, potentially pushed in this test. And you're going to hold it for each leg for approximately 20 seconds two times. So let's say this has been about 20 seconds on this leg. We would then switch, hold for 20 seconds, and then do it one more time for each leg. Now Clara's already warmed up and she's already done her stretch, so we'll move on to the test itself. You want to make sure the client's feet are lined up on the platform approximately six inches apart. Given that this is a smaller device, it'll probably be about the width of the platform itself. Now your, your flexometer, you'll want it to be pushed against something that's fairly rigid or hard like a wall, etc. For the sake of this video, I've just put a weight plate behind so that I know that this is going to stay in place. And I've also put a mat down so that Clara's not sitting on the ground. Depending on what your environment is, it uh, might be a consideration to put you know, a towel or a blanket down for your client. So essentially, Clara, uh, the way this test is going to work is that you're going to push this piece of metal, this slider, as far as you can. Um, to measure your flexibility of your hamstrings and your lower back. But when we do that, there's a few things you, I need you to remember. The first and most important part is that your knees should be flat on the ground the whole time. Right? I don't want you to force to the point of pain. If at any point you feel comfortable, you can stop. But I don't want to see your knees bend up so that you can try and get the slider further. If you do that, the trial won't count, and we're going to have to do it again. The other thing that you need to keep in mind when you're administering this test is that the slider has to be maintained in its position for a count of two seconds. Otherwise, what people tend to do is they'll slide as far as they can in a jerking motion, just push, and then they go back. And that's not really a true reflection of what their flexibility is. The final instruction I like to give the clients is that you're going to overlap your hands one on top of the other. And so when we notice Clara does this, her shoulders are square to the platform. If her hands were not, she could then potentially cheat with one shoulder or the other to try and get the slider further. Uh, which is, once again, not the purpose of the test. So I like to instruct them to overlap one hand on top of the other. It keeps the shoulders square. And then all she needs to do now is, after a regular exhalation, push as far as she can, once again, without feeling pain or discomfort, and hold the slider for two seconds and keep her knees flat on the ground. So whenever you're ready. One, two. Great job. And now we'll take the reading. Another thing to note with these devices is that these are American, and we use the Canadian rating system. And what that means is that right now I'm reading 31 and a half centimeters. You need to add three centimeters to that because this platform is not properly lined up. And so 31 and a half plus three gives me 34 and a half. That's what I would actually write down in the log sheet. You'll just do two trials. So Clark could try one more time. One, two. And now I've got 35 and a half. It's not surprising flexibility as she's warming up. She'll be able to go further and further, but typically we do two trials. So 35 and a half plus my three, 38 and a half, which is quite excellent. So great job, Clar. And that would conclude the test.